Hello and welcome to the Virtual Learning Strategy VLS Collection Demo. My name is Rama Kaba Demanin and I'm the Program Lead for eCampus Ontario Open Library. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to navigate the new and improved Open Library catalogs to search and find VLS resources, as well as how to use the new Open Library embed features. To start us off, welcome to the new and improved Open Library website. Many of the enhancements we've made have been based on your feedback collected throughout the years, either through surveys, intake brainstorming sessions, during workshops, and of course, through emails. We hope this enriches how you engage the open library services and find OERs and other educational resources. We are always looking to improve to better serve you. So please continue to use our contact form to send us your feedback, suggestions, and recommendations. We want to hear about how we did and, of course, how we can do better. So what's new and specifically impact how you can access VLS resources? So the VLS collection has its own website. This website was primarily created to meet the unique needs of the VLS project. You've had the opportunity to use the site to submit your projects using the submission page, and now you can use the site to access VLS resources as we continue to add more resources every day. So one of the unique aspects of the VLS project is the Ontario Common Licenses, which restrict access to just eligible Ontario educators and learners. We've listed these restricted resources in the catalog, so if you find an Ontario Common License resource, please email us at open at ecampusontario.ca to access these files. You can also use our contact form to send us the request as well. So, we, so this is to verify that you are an Ontario educator or learner. This is a process, uh, the process of validating your eligibility will become more automated as we continue to work and complete our eCampus Ontario portal in the coming weeks. So we thank you for your patience in the, meanwhile, in the meantime. You may have also noticed that the Open Library website and catalog also has a new look and feel that is similar and consistent with the VLS website. This is because no matter where you start your searching journey, whether it be the VLS collection website or the Open Library website, you'll be using the same catalogs. So for the purpose of this demo video, I'll just be using the VLS collection website. Another feature that is new to our website, you may have noticed, is that it is adaptive. This means that depending on the device you are viewing the page on, what you see will change based on your device size. You can also narrow. So as I continue to narrow, you'll notice that the page view also starts to change. As I expand, it also change. So this is something to just keep in mind as you're viewing the page, if text seems to not be aligned, you could always remember to narrow or expand the page in order to get the optimum view for your device or platform. So what exactly is new to how you search and find educational resources, specifically the VLS collection resources? So if you've used the Open Library catalog before, you may have noticed that we now have two cataloging view. So we have our main catalog in view here, which you may be familiar with, but we also have a secondary one, which I'm just going to click search here. So while that's opening up, I'm just going to go over the main cataloging interface. So the main difference between the two catalog is that the primary catalog is federated, which basically means that it searches across all of the open library assets, and this includes the Ontario OER collection, the VLS and CVLP collection, and H5P Studio. Whereas the secondary catalog, which is this new interface, searches for specific collection. So as you can see on the VLS collection website, when we search for resources, we're going to get the VLS collection resources specifically on this search interface. So if I go back to the Open Library website and if I click Find OER, then it's going to take me to that secondary interface, but then it's going to be for specifically the, OB, the Ontario OER collection. So again, to recap, we now have two catalog views. We have a main catalog view, 
which is federated, which means that you can search for multiple website database pages at the same time. Whereas we also now have a secondary catalog view, which allows you to search within a specific collection. The good news is whether you were using this interface or the main interface, rest assured you will find the resource you were looking for when it's added to the collection. So again, to recap, we have our main federated search, and then we have our specific collection search. So again, if you're looking for open education resources, you can use the Find OER page and catalog views to find OER specific. This means then all of the resources that you're going to find here are going to be all open access resources. This will also include VLS collections that have an open license. Whereas if you're looking for specifically VLS collections, then you can use the VLS, VLS collection website and search here. And this will include restricted resources that is only available to Ontario educators and learners. So if I go back to the search for a moment. So still speaking about searches, what exactly is new to the search? So again, if you've used the main cataloging interface before, you may have noticed that we now have more search filters for the open library. So at this moment, the search filters exclude H5P activities. So I repeat, at this moment, these search filters exclude H5P activity. If you search by keyword, you will get H5P activities but if you use the search filters, the search filters will only apply to the open library DSpace repository collections. This is a future, this is a development that we are working on um, in the next phase is to update H5P so that the so that we can apply the same open library filters to them. But at this time, only the open library collection, in, in our DSpace repository, you can use a search filter for. So what is new to the search filters or what has changed? So we've always had subject, but now you may notice that we now have parent subject and child subject that is nicely organized and displayed. Another feature that we have to all of the search uh, fields and facet is numbering. So we now have a tally for all items that have been tagged within a specific given search facet, giving you a preview of how many resources to respect within a given search facet. So again, you can select multiple options at the same time. So if we wanted to, we can do business and economy, we can do performance arts um, to see how many business and economy text, uh, how many business and economic resources also have performing arts, or we can do all. So I'm going to close this up and move to the next search filter. And then we have additional features. So we've always had, so you've always had the ability to see how many resources had an adoption report, how many resources had educator review, or how many resources had ancillary or supplementary resources. You can now find resources that have an accessibility statement included or resources that also provide a print-on-demand option. This means that these are resources, mostly open textbook, that also provide a print-on-demand option provided by the uh, printing team at the University of Waterloo. Another feature we have is item types. So item types really allows you to search and narrow down your result based on specific learning resource item types. So these are all fields that are populated based on common keywords, but also learning resource type control vocabularies. So it's a mix and match of most common element keyword that we receive for a resource within a given control vocabulary. So if we wanted to, we can say, show me all courses but then show me items that are also assessment. So this, of course, will combine the two together. 
And if we wanted to, we can say what instructional objects are available. As I'm clicking on the search filter, you may have also noticed that on the item itself, you may have noticed a tag that says VLS OER. So the VLS or CVLP as well, it will show up and also H5P as well, it will show up. It's just an indication letting you know that this is part of either the VLS collection, the CVLP collection, or it's just OER or H5P Studio. So it's another feature that you can look at for on the actual item um, uh, page itself. So again, if I close this up, the next feature we have and we always had is languages. But languages right now, we only have three language uh, showing up. But as, as we continue to catalog more resources and more resources continue, have, continue to have other languages, this field will expand and will increase. This goes for most of all of the fields that are control vocabulary type or user-based type. So meaning at this moment, we are only showing fields, we're only showing search facts that has a value. So we may have a resource that has not been cataloged yet that is a different language, but as we catalog it and add that language, that language will show up here as an option. And the same goes for item types or for uh, media format as well. Another new search option uh, to the open library uh, filter is educational level, education level. So again, you can narrow your search by selecting the education level. It is important to note that this is a multi-select field. So meaning on the submission form, submitters and creators have the option to select multiple. So meaning a resource in fact can belong and can be used in both a undergrad university course, but it could also be used in adult and continuing education. Media format is next. So again, if you are working within a specific platform or system that can only import specific file type, this gives you a sense of what is available. And this is another list that will expand as we continue to have more file types or we continue to identify common file type. So the media format title itself can vary. So we generally try to use user-friendly terms rather than actual file extensions name, but at times we may use file extensions name if that file extension is synonymous with user-friendly terms. So for example, HTML and XML is a file type extension, but it's also a user-friendly term that refers to web pages or H5P. Again, uh, as another example, so for uh, video is a user-friendly term that can reply that can refer to multiple extension types. So MP4, .mov. So just giving you that background explanation. And of course, we have licenses. So this is new to the Open Library Search filter. So because uh, and this is a highly requested feature that uh, we've received. So now you can search by license type. So for example, if you are an Ontario educator or license, um, and sorry, if you are an eligible Ontario educator or learner, then you know that you have access to Ontario Common License resource, uh, whether it be uh, Ontario Common License or Ontario Common License No Derivative. So you can select those. Or if you know that you are not an Ontario educator, but you are using and searching for resources, whether it be, whether it be VLS, CVLP, then you can exclude those from your search. So that way you are only seeing and receiving open resources that are available. And you may have noticed that the license uh, list is actually quite short. And that's again, that's because we are only showing the license type for actual resources that has been cataloged. So as we continue to catalog more and more license type are selected on a resource, this list will expand. So I'm just gonna go all license. Another new feature is publication date. So again, if you want to narrow your search within a given date, you can go ahead and do that. And one of my personal favor new to the open library is ability to search by institutions. At this moment, we have catalog resources from Canadian institutions and US institutions. 
and any other type of special institution that we catalog will also show up. So at the time, our institution list is primarily Canadian and US, and that's primarily based on resources we have cataloged at the time. So for example, if I wanted to find out uh, what the University of Ottawa has created, I can do that. And maybe I was also working on a BLS project that was collaboration as we had many of those. I could also see what uh, maybe University of Toronto has also cataloged and maybe even Conestoga College. And we can add another. So again, you can narrow your search down as many as you need it, uh, as many as you need to in order to find the search, uh, in order to find the resource you're looking for. Another feature, another element of this as well is that it is uh, pre-populated. So as you start typing, it will show you the option for the institutions available in the dropdown list. I'm just going to X this out and then go back to the top. The great news is that all of these search filters are also available in the specific collection interface. So if we click on filter here, we'll see that we're given the same option when it's available. So the, the search filter type will be available, but then the options or the search facet may be smaller in scope mainly because of the collection, the number of items within the, a given collection. So as you can see, the VLS collection at this moment have 202 items, right? Versus here where we have over 4,000 items, including the H5P Studio. But then when, but so that way, if we click on the search filter here, we'll notice that the element tend to be a lot smaller. So the additional features doesn't show up. So all of the additional feature type are not showing up. So we haven't seen anything yet for um, hard copy print on demand yet, or, um, or, and we have one educator review. So this is just showing you that although the filters are the same, the scope of the facets may be smaller, mainly because the collection item is smaller. So to recap, we have two main catalog. This main catalog here that allows you to search across multiple collections, database, websites, and a specific collection catalog interface, allowing you to search within and narrowing your search within a given collection. So what does this mean? Two websites, two catalog views, where do you start? You can start at either the Open Library or the VLS Collection website. Either will get you the resource you are searching for. What you want to keep in mind is sort of your uh, searching goal. So for example, if you are searching for open educational resources specifically, then you may wanna start on the Open Library website. If you are searching for VLS specific resources or Ontario Common License resource specifically, then you may wanna start on the VLS collection website. But ultimately, if you're unsure and you just wanna to browse to see what is available, then you can start on either website accessing the main cataloging interface which will allow you to search across both the VLS collection, CVLP, Ontario OER, and H5P Studio as well. Okay, so moving on to our next feature. So we've also added three additional widgets allowing you to engage on our websites. So similar to the OER cost saving calculator over here. So I'm going to click on embed to embed the code. You can now highlight a specific collection, make the open library search catalog available to others and share your own curated list using our embed feature available on the specific collection website, uh, sorry, specific collection catalog. So if we click on embed and anywhere else you see the but in embed, you can click on it to embed that specific um, item or page. 
So when we click on the embed option, we will the embed panel will will appear and we will be given two options. So these two options include the ability to actually embed your own search results or the open library search bar. So let's do a quick demo of this. So let's say, for example, I want to find out how many resources are French, how many VLS resources are currently French and is available. And I want to share that result, right? So then if I narrow my search results, so now I have six results that were found, I can go ahead and uh, click on the embed button, and then I can click open library search results. This will then show the iframe code. So I'm going to click copy to clipboard. The outer frame will be highlighted, allowing me to copy the text. And then I can paste it into any web property or site where iframe is supported. So I can post this into perhaps I have a pressbook uh, that I'm putting together and I want to highlight these resources or I can use it in the iframe H5P content type. I can use it in the, on uh, social media, in website, libguide. So anywhere where iframe tag is supported, you can copy and paste this code into. And that generally tend to be most web pages and most website. So if I X here, and let's say, for example, I want to embed the search bar. So the search bar is actually just a simple search bar. You can click embed and then just click on the open library search bar. This will allow you to embed that simple search bar into, again, any website or web page where iframe is supported, allowing your users to search the open library uh, catalog. So to recap, we now have two embed features on the item specific collection catalog view. And that is the, the ability to embed a search result or the search bar. Our third search uh, embed, uh, embed um, feature is actually on the item detail page, which I will be going over next. So I'm going to highlight our item detail page, which also has been redesigned. So to do that, I'm going to search for a resource. I will use the main catalog interface. So let's search for fundamentals. Of, fundamentals of business. So all of our search is, um, is always pre-populated, helping you find exactly what you're looking for. So I'm going to select this one. And this one is generally one of my favorites to demonstrate, mainly because it happens to be a resource that has a lot of fields checked off. So that is always a great one to demonstrate in terms of all of the different uh, elements that can be visible or fields that can be visible on the front end to an end user. So this is, again, if you are familiar with the Open Library website and you've used our catalog before to find resources, you'll notice that this page has also been redesigned. Um, we've worked hard on expanding and displaying relevant, helpful information about a resource to help you decide whether you found the appropriate resource to meet your needs. And of course, a lot of these details are conditional based upon the feedback, um, based upon the item type. So for example, an open textbook such as this will have different details than an XRVR or a simulation or even a video. So keeping in mind that a lot of these field options, right, and uh, detail or view details will change and will not be available or conditional based upon the item type because it simply does not exist for a specific item type. And also it's based upon, um, you know, input from the end use, uh, from the creator or the submitter. So the more information and the more metadata we get from the submitter, the more we can input to have a complete um, representation of the item. So again, so on the item detail page, you know, we have the title, 
uh, option to download. Um, as a repository, one of our main goal is to always offer editable file types of resources. So the download button will always be on top and center when it's available and when the license type permits. So the download button may not be available for certain item types. So again, that's mainly because either uh, the item types doesn't necessarily negate a a, um, a download of um, an editable file or the editable file is actually accessible in the online format version itself. So keeping that in mind. And then um, underneath we have total downloads. So again, how many times this resource has been downloaded? Um, something new that we've added is the adopted resource symbol. So again, um, we've always had the ability to search and find resources that had an adoption report on the catalog um, and the, through our primary catalog search filters. But now we've added that option on the item page itself, reminding you that this resource has been adopted. And this is primarily because you can always reach out to find out um, if available other Ontario educators who may have adopted re this resource for their teaching, if you want to learn more about um, adopting it for your own teaching. So if we click on view details, we'll see the actual metadata elements about the item itself. So again, uh, more details such as table of content when it's available, giving you a sneak peek into what is available in the, um, in the book. We have uh, language, we have the date published, uh, publication date, license type, learning resource type, institution, affiliation, uh, affiliations. And we also added uh, last updated. So again, la uh, date when it was added and also last updated. So as a hint, these two will always be the same. Last updated will change when we receive an actual update for the file itself. So just as a reminder, if you're wondering why these dates are the same or when these dates change, this is just keeping in mind the sort of dynamic nature of um, digital resources, but OER specifically um, has a tendency to be updated. So that is a good way to check to see when the resource was last updated compared to when it was last added. And then we have our common uh, button. So again, read online, hard copy uh, to order print on demand, uh, supplementary uh, materials um, will be available here. So if there is any sort of uh, supplementary or auxiliary resources, whether it be for an educator or it's for uh, learners will be accessible here. And then we also have uh, instructor resources such as test bank or anything that our case uh, answers or anything that is uh, educator access only will um, sort of the, uh, the information will be available and posted here. But if you click on this, it will actually open up uh, the inbox, the uh, mailing inbox to email us, which at which point we validate your status as an educator before sending you the results. Um, something new is you can save to list. This feature again is tied into our actual uh, eCampus Ontario portal, which is coming soon. But you'll have the ability to save to uh, ability to save specific resources to your own list that you create and then edit later. Um, the other and third final embed feature that we've added is um, the ability to embed a specific resource page. Right. So then again, if you click on that, you'll be able to embed Fundamentals of Business Canadian Edition into any site's page where iframe tag is supported. And as we go down the list, we'll see that we have related resources. So as many uh, resources are added and related to the resource we added here, and this could be because they're part of the same series, because it was adapted from um, an accessibility format type. So the, rela the relationship can vary depending upon the resource type itself. We have reviews. So our review panel has, uh, has received a new look. So again, you can look at the few, uh, full review. You now have the option to expand all. So this was actually a highly recommended feature as well uh, to our user testing was the ability to view all of the response at once as opposed to individually. And shifting through. So again, you can see the second review or here, or you can expand on just specific sections that you are curious about. 
And then as you scroll down, we now have the option inviting users to share their supplementary resource. So, you know, maybe there's a textbook that has been created and an educator has adapted that resource and has actually created a test bank. So we encourage you to share your supplementary resource as you create it for resources that may not have any supplementary resource. And then of course, the ability to share your adoption if you've used any of these resources. So this is again, an example of the new item detail page, which basically looks slightly different, but still familiar to the old page with more options um, that are conditional. So again, the fields are conditional based upon the item type. So I'm going to also demonstrate another item page, just showing you the difference between um, a different type of resource. So this resource is a simulation, uh, 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 simulation resource type. So as you can see for this particular resource, we have an accessibility statement not, uh, label is included. So if we click on that, um, at this moment, it won't work because it's an Ontario Common License resource. So again, these, um, the ability to uh, download or click on file type for Ontario Common License uh, resources will become more streamlined. Um, so for example, if I click on download, it'll say to log in. So that will become available and more streamlined once the development is done. So it is coming soon. Um, but as you can see, we have the accessibility statement notice. We also have a preview button. So again, uh, this is enabled. So I'm just going to X this before it starts or we end up with commercial. But the preview option is available for resources that may require specific software that are not easily accessible. So that's another option. Uh, preview can also be set up for courses as well. So for example, if you have a course and maybe you have this course that is in you know, an open platform, you can go ahead and provide a, um, you can go ahead and provide a preview of that course as well. And sometimes the preview is not necessarily for uh, students to take, but it's rather a preview to show other educators how the session, how the course is supposed to look. So that's something to keep in mind. So again, if we click uh, preview here, it'll take us to the actual D2L open courses, giving you a snapshot of sort of what it looks like, the modules. Um, you could also register as well for the course as is an open course. But again, this is just um, uh, something new that is that we've now added the option for. It's a preview for resource type that aren't necessarily easy, easily accessible unless you have the right software tool or platform to view them. Okay, so this concludes um, the item, D, uh, this concludes the demo itself. So, you know, I've gone over the two cataloging interface that we now have. So if I go back to the um, here, I can go back to the VLS website. So let's just um, go back to search results um, here. So VLS website. And then I'm going to open the Open Library website in a new tab again, just to show you. Yep. So we have our main cataloging interface. So I'm just gonna expand this so we can see it better. So whether, again, you, are starting afresh and you wanna search for something, uh, you wanna browse it, but you're not sure what you're looking for, we encourage you to use our main open library search filter, uh, sorry, open main open library search catalog, which will then allow you to search across multiple sites, platform and uh, collection as well. So as you can see, I have one H5P appearing here. Um, a good way to know whether you found in OER or uh, in H5P activity is to just look at the tag up here. So each item is tagged at a glance. So it'll say H5P if you come upon an H5P module or OER, which is the open library. Um, you could also change how you sort. You could also change your view. So from a card to a list view is another option you can do. Um, so again, the keyword will work for all 
um, for all of the open library assets in the main cataloging interface. Sorry, the main um, catalog interface. So just keeping that in mind. So if I search for business, for example, I'm going to get 117 item type. If I go back to card view, it'll give us a good snapshot of what these um, items are. So we already have one VLS showing up here, another VLS. So again, if we go down, we have H5P. Um, you know, we can sort by uh, new show newest item added that are business uh, keyword. So again, going down and then we can do uh, or show by alphabetical order. And again, this is just uh, showing you the different ways that you can search and different filters you can apply. That's not necessarily the open library filter. And then we have our secondary cataloging interface, which again, if you, um, you know, click on find OER, it would take you to the secondary interface, which allows you to search for specific uh, collection. And then for VLS, um, if we do this, it'll take us to that secondary interface. So again, this is just accommodating different searching needs, um, but rest assured, no matter which cataloging interface you use, you will find the resource you are looking for if it has been cataloged. If not, feel free to always contact us and reach out. So uh, once again, um, thank you for your time. This concludes uh, the demo. We hope, uh, I hope um, I did a good job explaining the new uh, filters that um, we've, um, we've added to the open library. And we hope that this will help facilitate your search the ability to search, find, share, use and reuse, and of course, add to the VLS collection and the open library collection in general. Thank you.